Okay. This video is on reducing the chance of air bubbles after uh, working on the cool cooling system in an old Chevy engine. This would include the uh, Chevy small block V8s like the 350 and uh, so on. And it also includes the straight six engines. The prob one problem with these is the location of this thermostat here. If you look at it, it's uh, it's in this position right here, so it's going to trap air if you uh, put it in without full filling up the uh, coolant first. All that gap there will, even if you uh, fill up the uh, radiator at the radiator cap, if this is blocked off, it's going to trap air. And that's a, a big mistake that a lot of people do. Another, uh, one way to prevent this uh, from trapping too much air is to buy a thermostat with a jiggle valve right there. The idea behind the jiggle valve is that it drops down uh, when there's an air bubble allows air through slowly. Another way to deal with this problem is to is to drill one or two tiny holes like right here and right here in the flange to let air through but the problem with that is that it will uh, uh, allow it to flow when uh, coolant when it's cold and uh, it will take longer to warm up if that, I don't know if that's a big deal if you're in a cold climate and it's freezing and you're driving along then it's a bigger deal than if you're in a uh, warmer climate now another issue with this uh, setup is the location of the heater core in a 1966 Chevy. Uh, as you can see, the heater core is actually as high as the uh, top of the uh, radiator or higher. Um, this is if you uh, drain, replace the heater core and put it in dry you're going to have a big air bubble. Uh, the uh, water pump will still pump some water or coolant once it starts running, um, but uh, that's going to pull coolant from the engine since it's cold. Uh, the thermostat's not open yet, and, um, and also, even if it doesn't, that do, it by itself doesn't create an air bubble. Uh, it's going to uh, lower the radiator level uh, lower than it should be. So one way to get around this um, is to of course um, turn it on and add coolant once coolant starts circulating and make up for some of the coolant drop um, but that doesn't deal with the air bubble. One way to get rid of the air bubble is to take this hose off, put a funnel on it uh, up about this high and uh, or higher even and pour coolant in there until um, it, uh, it fills up. That's another thing I've done in the past to prevent air bubbles. Um, if there's an air bubble this thermostat's not going to open uh, until it's really hot um, because uh, there's no, it's designed to uh, open up at when uh, submerged in coolant and if there's no coolant there then it's not getting the uh, right temperature at the right time and yeah bad things could happen basically you'll see the uh, engine overheating sometimes if there is an air bubble uh, anyway and what you can do is uh, put in gear and move it forward a little bit and slam on the brakes and that should get enough coolant for the uh, thermostat to open or that should get enough coolant at, to the thermostat to open it up uh, more quickly um, I've had to do that too um, sometimes you have to do it repeatedly though um, but of course it's overheating you have to deal with it fast otherwise um, you're gonna cause engine damage or at best a head gasket leak if not a crack in the head or something like that so this is important. Another thing to note is that the uh, temperature is stamped 
at the bottom of the uh, copper there. Uh, this is 195 degrees, which is stock for this car. Um, some people use 180 or even 160. Uh, if your engine's running fine, 195 is fine. It uh, it's actually better for the engine because it uh, is there. If you look up charts of temperature versus cylinder wall wear, you'll find that 180 and especially 160 have uh, higher rates of cylinder wall wear. Basically, your engine won't last as long if you're running at 160. At 180, it still won't last as long as 195. Plus, you'll get better gas mileage slightly if that makes a difference to you and better power. Unless, well, some race cars, in, yeah. Anyways, get. There are exceptions if you're really into performance, but I'm not that much into performance. Big factor in reducing air bubbles. That's fill up the uh, coolant. I'll usually just pour it in the radiator like normal, but I'll leave the thermostat off to uh, watch the coolant go up, and once it reaches the uh, where the thermostat should be, then I just put the thermostat in and seal it up. Now, sometimes there's a time delay, so you can't go real fast this way. So now it's just starting to rise in the uh, thermostat housing. Now it's rising fast. And you can see there's, uh, you might be able to see there's bubbles from the um, air in the uh, heater core. So if you move it around, sometimes you can get rid of the, uh, the bubbles there. In a later Chevy, like in the 90s, the heater core is much lower on the firewall. So you don't have this problem that I have with the 66, uh, where the heater core is trapping air, as much air. And with the uh, heater core hoses taking up some of the uh, coolant, uh, the coolant level is dropped. Uh, when I stopped, uh, the uh, coolant got up to where it was a good level, acceptable level for the putting the thermostat back in, but now it's borderline, it barely touch the bottom of the thermostat where it is, the coolant level is right now. And there it is. If you get too high, too close to the top, um, when you put the thermostat in, it'll displace some of the coolant and um, overflow and uh, it might uh, having the uh, moisture there can affect how well the uh, silicone gasket maker uh, seals uh, against the housing and, uh, and such. This one works out right and so now I just need to uh, put a uh, caulk on the uh, both sides of the uh, thermostat gasket and then crank this down and another important thing is to take a scraper and take the time to clean up all the old gasket material also another thing to keep in mind if you're flushing your coolant uh, which with green stuff should be two years or so uh, sometimes three um, but according to the manuals it's two um, if you have a thermostat off anyway, why not replace it? It's ten bucks or so. Five. It, they're not expensive with the gasket. Um, and if one of these go bad, it can wreck your engine. So it's a small amount to pay in exchange for uh, safety. It's just um, some of the chain auto parts stores, their thermostats are not calibrated very well. I've had a series of thermostats from a chain store like uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly come back um, cause and basically they're causing the engine to overheat in a, uh, a TBI 305 5.0 and uh, 
and I couldn't figure out what was wrong until uh, I went down to a, a different brand thermostat and it was uh, 180 anyway even though the computer is better at 195 on computerized um, trucks. It was a brand basically. I uh, got a different brand, a better brand and suddenly it stopped overheating. Okay, on, on this engine the uh, bolt holes uh, just go straight through and they don't go into the uh, coolant. I'll uh, show you small blocks. Some of them might go into the uh, uh, cooling passage. I've seen some engine. I don't remember which GM vehicle it was, but when it's on the intake manifold in a V engine, there's some of the GM later GM engines where bolt holes go right through into the coolant passage. In that case, you should put uh, uh, coolant or put gasket sealant all the way out here too and put uh, uh, sealant on the threads. Um, once again, not all of them do that. You just have to check uh, check yours to make sure it doesn't go all the way through into the coolant passage. I know I've seen it. I just don't remember which engines. So, uh, now they have it on the uh, that location. Then I put it on here. Um, it's, I mean, you, technically, you could put gasket or silicone over here on this engine, but it's really pointless because it's, no coolant gets there unless you're leaking over here anyway, and it's just more cleaned up later. When you uh, replace the gasket or, and the thermostat, you have to scrape all the way out to here instead of, if you put the gasket maker all the way out here, it's, that's why I say it's just pointless and uh, makes more trouble. So I have uh, the bolt sticking through a little bit to help me uh, line, line the, uh, the uh, housing up to the right place. You can see that it's squeezed out a little bit. If you put too much uh, silicone on, it'll squeeze out the other side too. And just as is, you can see it squeezed out this side. And if it's way too much, it could potentially even interfere with the uh, thermostat. Up. This truck, the 1966 Chevy, did not originally come with the overflow tank. And so, what they uh, actually were doing, you'd, you'd fill it up about an inch or two within the uh, the radiator cap and then you just leave the air bubble right here. You would just leave the uh, coolant level around here. Any more full than once the uh, coolant heats up it'll just come out the uh, overflow tube anyway so there's always a inch air pocket in the uh, radiator and it's much higher than the engine so it, the air pocket doesn't affect the uh, coolant level in the uh, engine when you only have an inch or two from the top of the radiator cap. Later vehicles, of course, um, they put the radiator lower and so that there won't be air pockets and then they uh, put a coolant or an overflow tank so that, and you leave that uh, wherever it says to uh, uh, fill it up to and that's where the uh, it allows the uh, air pocket in the t overflow tank to uh, allow for adjustment in the coolant, coolant level based on how hot it is and uh, the uh, suction when uh, you turn the engine off and it cools off the suction will from the tube will pull the uh, uh, coolant back into the radiator.